Hello, my name is Tom, and in this video, I'll be walking through a linguistics logic puzzle from NACLO, which is a contest based on linguistic puzzles. When I was in high school, I competed in this contest, and I enjoyed it so much that I'm now getting a PhD studying linguistics. Here is the puzzle that we'll be walking through. We have five sentences in Indonesian, along with their translations in English. And using the information we can figure out from these five sentences, we need to answer the question at the bottom, which is how would you say the big cat likes the dogs in Indonesian? If you want to try solving this puzzle on your own, feel free to pause the video at this point and give it a shot. Otherwise, keep watching and I'll walk through how we can solve the puzzle. To get us started, one thing you might notice is that several of the Indonesian sentences contain the word sopi. And whenever sopi shows up in the Indonesian, we see cow in the English translation. So we can conclude that sopi is the Indonesian word for cow. And let's also make sure to write down everything we figured out so we can keep track of it. So I'll add some space to do that, and we can write down that the Indonesian word for cow is sopi. Next, let's take a look at the sentence at the top. And you'll notice that it contains the Indonesian word sopi sopi, which looks a lot like the word sopi that we just figured out. Plus, the English translation includes the word cows. So this makes it pretty likely that sopi sopi is the Indonesian word for cows, given how similar it is to sopi. And based on this example, it also looks like in Indonesian, the way that you make a noun plural is to say the noun twice. And if you think about it, this makes a lot of sense. If you have just one cow, you say the word sopi once. If you have more than one cow, you say the word sopi more than one times. So let's write down this rule we've just figured out, which is that the way that you form a plural is to repeat the noun. And now that we've figured out this rule, we can look to see if there are any other instances of repeated nouns uh, in the sentences we have here. And sure enough, in the middle sentence here, we see pisong pisong, which given the rule we just figured out, probably means some plural noun. Then if we look at the English translation, it does contain a plural noun, bananas. So pisong pisong probably means bananas, and therefore the Indonesian word for banana is pisong. And since we figured out that word, let's fill in the other two places we see pisong here as banana. Okay, now let's look at the bottom sentence here. On the Indonesian side, there's only one word left to be accounted for, dengar. Well, on the English side, there are these three words uh, that we have not accounted for yet the, here's, and the. So it, potentially dengar could mean any of these words. It could either mean the or here's. But if it meant the, we should see two copies of dengar, since the appears twice in the, the English translation, yet we only see one copy of dengar. So dengar probably means here's instead of the. Um, and to further check this, we also can see that dengar appears in the top sentence here, along with here in the English translation. So from both of these sentences, it looks like dengar means here or here's. Now, um, if we go back to the bottom sentence here, there still are these two copies of the in the English translation that we have not accounted for. And it seems like there are no words in the Indonesian sentence that correspond to these instances of the. So based on this example, it looks like when you translate from English to Indonesian, you can ignore the. So we've added that rule to the bottom right corner here on the information we're figuring out about the language. Next, let's compare these two sentences, which look very similar to each other. If you look at the Indonesian sentences, they're exactly the same, except that the bottom one contains the word basar. And then on the English side, these sentences are also exactly the same, except that the bottom one contains the word big. So if we put these two observations together, we can conclude that basar is the Indonesian word for big. So we'll add that to the vocabulary we're building up, and we'll also translate this other copy of Basar up at the top. Going back to this first place where we observed Basar, also take careful notice here of the word order. So in English, when we say the big banana, the adjective big comes before the noun banana. But on the Indonesian side, the word order is the opposite. We have Pisong Basar, that is banana big. So let's write this down under word order. In Indonesian, the word order is a little different from English, where in Indonesian, you do noun first and then adjective. Okay, now uh, we're getting pretty close here. So if we come back to this top sentence, uh, the only Indonesian word left is anjing and the only English word left is dog. So anjing must mean dog. 
In both of these sentences, the only Indonesian word left is lihat, and the only English word left is seas, so lihat must mean seas. And all that's left now is this sentence here. So we have two Indonesian words left to be translated, which are kuching and suka, and two English words left to be accounted for, which are cat and likes. But which Indonesian word goes with which English word? Well, to figure this out, we need to look back at the word order one more time. So let's take a look at this sentence, for example. Looking at this sentence, it seems that Indonesian has the same overall sentence word order as English has. So in both cases, we see the subject of the sentence first, which is cow, then the verb, sees, then the object, banana. And we see the same thing in the top sentence here. The sentence in Indonesian and in English starts with the subject, cows, then the verb here, and then the object, big dog. So even though Indonesian and English have a different word order for the noun and the adjective, they have the same word order for the subject, verb, and object. So let's write that down. Indonesian has a word order of subject, verb, object. And now we can use this information to figure out what kuching and suka mean. The first word, kuching, has to be the subject, cat, while the second word, suka, has to be the verb, likes. So we can fill those in and add them to our vocabulary. And now that we've figured out everything we can from those five translations that were given to us, we can now answer the question at the bottom, which is, how would you say the big cat likes the dogs in Indonesian? To start out, as we just figured out, the, English sen the Indonesian sentence structure has the basic structure of subject, verb, object. So those are the three slots we're going to need to fill. Now let's start by translating the subject, which is the big cat. So we know that the word for big is basar, and the word for cat is kuching. Um, and we also know that when you need to combine a noun and an adjective, you put it in the order of noun first and then adjective. So putting all of this together gives us that the big cat should be translated as kuching basar. The next part of the sentence is the verb, which is likes, and the word for that in Indonesian is suka, so we can add that in the slot there. And finally, to translate the object, uh, the object is the dogs. Now, we've never seen the word dogs before, but we have seen the singular form dog, which is anjing. And we've also figured out the rule for how to create a plural noun from the singular noun, which is to repeat the noun twice. So this gives us that the word for the dogs would be anjing anjing. There, ta-da, we've now solved the puzzle. The final answer is kuching basar suka anjing anjing. If you enjoyed this puzzle, you can find many more puzzles like it at the top URL shown here. In addition, you can register to compete in the NACO contest, which happens every year. It's based around puzzles like this one. It's free to participate in, and it's a lot of fun.